This is Luke Iorio, and here's this week's Meaningful Moment. Hey there, everyone. I wanted to welcome you back to another Meaningful Moment. And this week, I wanted to share from a slightly different place. You see, over the past week, my family lost an absolute wonderful human being. And I felt the need to share a few things that have been dancing in and even on my heart quite a bit. You see, my cousin passed away just simply too young this week, and yet nothing about him is going to be forgotten anytime soon. You see, he was an artist, and in actuality, he did so much more than that. He was an author, a journalist, a photographer, an art critic, a professor. Uh, He was also a quick wit, a son, a brother, a nephew, a cousin, Uh, but truly at the heart of it, he was an artist, and he had an absolute unique eye on life. He even had a quick laugh, followed by this sideways, smirking kind of smile that seemed to hint that he saw or knew something that others might not, but he was always too humble to say so. His family, already close, grew even closer in the past couple of years, and while I wasn't there to be directly part of a lot of those experiences, just hearing about them, seeing the pictures, seeing the smiles and the obvious love and deep connection was beautiful and heartwarming and inspiring. I've been lucky to grow up in a family of music and art, oftentimes set to the backdrop of entrepreneurship. Uh, My mom is an artist and always has been. My father is an entrepreneur. My aunt and grandparents were both musicians and teachers as well as entrepreneurs. And my grandfather, who lived well into his 80s, decades after he stopped teaching, we'd be out to dinner at just some local restaurant and someone would stop by our table and say, Mr. Iorio, I took lessons with you at major music 30 or 40 or 50 years ago. Thank you. And it's so glad. I'm so glad to see you doing well. And this was one of the memories that danced in in my mind and in my heart over the past week as I read some of the notes that students have been leaving for my cousin this week uh, on social media. And while my grandparents and aunt tickled the ivories of pianos, uh, and yes, even accordions were a good Italian family after all. My cousin tickled canvases of all kinds, exploring the colors and angles of life. He opened a different world view to so many, including myself. I was inspired by him, and I also admired him. I share all of these personal thoughts with you to encourage you and remind you to celebrate life. What I mean is, why do we wait for reunions once every 20 years? Or worse yet, why do we wait for funerals? or even just until the next wedding occurs, to get together and have these moments, these conversations and reflections. Why don't we do this as an annual gathering? Heck, why don't we just do it monthly or something that moves us towards this each week, each month of our lives? Celebrating life is about being more intentional and proactive to prioritize and share what matters most to you. It's about creating a beautiful life. That's everyone's legacy and everyone's right to create what a beautiful life is to you. But we don't have that. We don't get that experience unless we prioritize it, unless we take intentional, meaningful action to bring it into our regular everyday, every week lives. A meaningful life is so often defined by meaningful experiences, those meaningful moments that we hold on to and remember for our lifetime. For me and for many that I've interviewed, those meaningful moments come from being present, from challenging ourselves, from expressing yourself openly, vulnerably, and authentically from contributing to something bigger than yourself, and from those moments of pure, beautiful connection with self and with others. Here's the thing. We can create those moments. They don't need to just simply be by accident or by circumstance. Those moments nearly always begin by being present, being right where you are, or as Ram Dass says, be here now. From there, what do you want to connect to? To the moment? to the feelings that are rising up, to the voice of intuition that you can finally hear because your mind quieted enough, or to the person across from you who just wants to know that they are accepted for who they are, that they are understood, that they're important, that they matter, just as you wish to have the same. Over the next month, I'm asking you to pick out just three or four experiences, those meaningful moments that you wish to create and sink into. To do that, Picture what relationships, what activities or experiences you would love to be more present and connected to. Is it at home? Is it with other family members or friends? 
Perhaps it's a slow stroll by a babbling brook with nature chirping and rustling all around you. Maybe it's holding your loved one's hand and being able to feel your heart beat in that touch together as they harmonize around some tune that only the two of you know. Maybe it's racing a convertible down the highway with the wind in your hair and the radio blasting out your favorite music. What are those experiences where you fully touch your bliss? And in what ways can you have that today, this week, this month? Pick out at least three or four of these meaningful moments and plan out your next 30 days. That's right. This isn't an exercise. I want you to approach it as an experiment, which means we've got to do it. We've got to follow through on it. We have to take action. I'll share my own experiences with you as I go, as I prioritize this even more in my life. And I hope that you'll share back with me. As part of these 30 days, what I'm also asking you to do is capture your thoughts each day after each moment. And I personally, I find journaling to be the best method. It's what works for me. But you can also record a short video or even just record your voice over to yourself, whatever method it is that works for you. But it's important to capture these moments. It's what helps our, our minds, our brains wrap itself around these memories and truly hold on to them. So for whether it be writing or, or video or audio, I'll tell you that for myself, all I concentrate on are the first hundred words. That's all. Just the first hundred words. I use my phone. I don't even use a notepad or, or a computer or video camera, nothing like that anymore. I just, my phone is right there and it starts out like I was just writing a long text to myself. That's it. And there's days that I write 101 words, maybe even just a hundred. <laughs> and there's days that I write thousands but it was just about getting it started. I just go with whatever it is that's there. And so make sure that throughout the course of this month, certainly after each of those three or four major experiences that you want to focus on, but also maybe even just two to three times a week, typically at the end of a day or the beginning of the next day, a morning reflection on the previous day, take that time to capture what were the meaningful moments, the meaningful insights or experiences or feelings that came up for you over the course of the previous day or that particular moment that you were sinking into. When I do that and when I reflect on that and I reflect on the small moments, not just the big ones, it helps me also then set intention about maybe my next 24 hours, my next 72 hours, maybe my next week. And that's all. It doesn't need to be an essay. It doesn't need to even, it can be bullet points even. Just capture your thoughts, capture these experiences, capture these feelings so that you can explore them and you can bring them out in your life that much more often and that much more intentionally. And then one month from now, just consider, just ask yourself, what's different? What's different in you and your life after these 30 days? And now ask yourself and consider what would it be like to live your life this way? To prioritize these relationships, the conversations and experiences and so on. To even just bring one or two or even three of these moments into every single week, let alone every single month. You know, one of the things that amazed me as I uh, was hearing so many great stories about my cousin over the course of this past week was that at one point he was hospital bound for quite a stretch of time and he turned his, his hospital room into a makeshift studio. He prioritized what brought him joy and what brought him that connection in life. He made it happen in his own unique artist's way and he created those meaningful moments for himself despite what it was that he was growing through, going through. What do you want to make happen for yourself? Will you do it? Will you follow through on it? You can have a beautiful life, whether you're here for another year or hopefully many, many, many more decades. What are you willing to do to paint this life as you wish to experience it, as you wish to see it? I look forward to seeing how this experiment affects us. And I look forward to hearing how it impacts and touches each and every single one of you. Let's travel this road together. Until next time. Much love.